I like Black Templars. A lot. A lot, a lot. I have a lot of other models and a lot of other armies, but my Black Templar are my thing. It's my favorite faction, my favorite thing to collect, and no matter what else I work on, the Crusade always pulls me back in. 10,000 points, not too shabby. And going through it, I was reminded of an old chapter relic. A space marine I have been sitting on for years, but never brave enough to paint it. I can't yet, it's just one space marine, but I'm not ready. Maybe after today's project, I will be though. Hey guys, Jay here, welcome to Eons of Battle. I get asked a lot if there are any models that I'm too scared to paint, models that I don't want to ruin them so I just don't paint them. And to this question, I'm always very blasé about it because I think that this is a hobby and that you should always just do it. Because you really can't ruin anything. I always say don't be afraid of your models because you can't ruin them. Paint is an additive process. You can always change it and add to it, add more paints, and if you really find yourself back to a new corner, you can go with the nuclear option and then strip off the old paint and start over. But I am a big liar McLyerson because I have a model that I've been hanging on to for years and years and I've never touched because I am afraid of it. Or maybe afraid is not the right word, but I have held off because it's just so special and rare that I want it to be truly perfect when I do paint it. And that is this, the Forge World Imperial Space Marine. I remember you could still pick this up on the Forge World web store in 2014, but it quickly left. The description read, one of the very first models that Forge World released back in the dim and distant past when dinosaurs walked the Earth was the large-scale Imperial Space Marine, the first in our showcase series of figures. Standing at an impressive 6 inches, 150 millimeters tall, even to this day, this is one of our most popular models. This model comes in quite a number of pieces which allows for plenty of scope for modeling and personalization. This thing is a behemoth. It is an amazing piece, definitely a product of its time. It has flaws for sure, but those flaws are more endearing than anything, especially when you consider it's almost 20 years old. Much more character in it than this. But I don't want to paint it yet. I want to have some real experience under my belt before I tackle this Space Marine. So I need to paint a big Space Marine, but not this big Space Marine. Quite the predicament. So I bought something. Inside this box is the perfect opportunity to paint a big Black Templar. It is a garage kit from Chest of Colors. They made a small number of these things and I got one. It's the perfect size, not too big, not too small. A garage kit is an amateur model resin kit and there is an absolute charm to something like this. It might not have the polish or fit and finish of a real product, but you usually get something much more unique. This model will be literally the perfect experiment to see where my large Space Marine painting skills are at, what exactly I can do, and what I need to improve on. And speaking of things that are perfect, this video is sponsored by Cobalt Keep. Not only does Cobalt Keep make the best quality magnet ready bases on all sides of the Mississippi, but they also make the cleverest display cases around. First there was the army display case, then there was the hero display case, and now they're introducing a new cavalry display case. This case is bigger and taller than the other two, perfect for larger minis or busts like the one I'm working on in this video. The cases are stackable within their type, have metal plates that make up the floor space so your magnet-ready bases are held securely, and are made from polycarbonate which is much harder than acrylic. Models that need a little more room or airspace are held neatly and are perfect for display or to be transported to your war games in style. If you shop at the code DISPLAY20, you can get 20% off of your order of Cobalt Keep display cases. Now, back to the bust. This is a large resin kit and it's going to require quite a bit of sanding and resin dust is pretty nasty. So I have my vacuum cleaner standing by and I have some PPE, some personal protective equipment. If I didn't have to capture footage, I would probably do this stuff outside. Resin dust gets everywhere and you really don't want it anywhere. I have a helmeted head and a bare head and I want the option for both. So I drilled a small indent into the torso and neck so that I could glue in a magnet. Then I assembled a figure using lots of super glue. Now, my figure is gonna be a Black Templar, and so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of modification when it comes to the shoulder pads. This one's okay, I can put whatever I want on there, but this side with the Imperial Eagle, the Black Templar don't really wear this symbol. The Black Templar are his symbol. This one on the chest is okay, this is the Imperialis, but this one has gotta go. Luckily, I have this shoulder pad, and it's a very nice Mark III shoulder pad, and so I'm going to try to grind down this salamander symbol, and then I will have two very appropriate shoulder pads. 
This was nerve-wracking. I only had one part, no second tries. I went slow and carefully, sanding a little, stopping to check, then sanding a little more. I often stopped to give my workspace a quick vacuum. I finished off the shoulders with a little sanding twig. Oh, yeah. That was quite a production, but I was able to grind off the entire symbol without cracking or breaking the bits, and it looks pretty sharp. Oh yeah, this will work. Now it was time for painting. I hosed the model down with some black primer. So the armor's black, it's done, right? Wrong! If I leave it black the way it is, it's gonna look really, really flat and boring like an action figure. I have to add more colors to make it actually look like scale black armor. I sprayed brown onto the figure randomly. This will make the figure look dirty. And I used this color to base coat the shoulders, purity seals, and holster. After that, I sprayed some light gray to highlight the model. This is not a zenithal. I sprayed this here and there to create some spots of light on the armor where light would be reflecting. Then I sprayed some tan onto the shoulders and purity seals. Now that my armor is not black, I will make it black. I took a black wash and brushed this over the entire model. I used a clean brush to pull the wash off of the top parts of the head and armor. This will darken the model and shade all the recesses but let the gray and brown show through. I gave the model two coats of this and it darkened the model to almost black, which was just right. On the shoulders, I painted a line of brown wash around the edges. Then quickly before it dried, I took a clean damp brush and feathered out that harsh brown edge. Now it looks like dirt and, let's be honest, poop has accumulated on the corners of these shoulder pads. Ah, oh, I absolutely love it. I made a big old mess, but the model is looking great. You can totally see the brown and the gray showing through, through all the wash layers, and the huge scale is showing up everything nicely. And I think it looks like black armor. This is really, really nice. Ah. Man, just a couple more highlights, and then I think the armor will be completely done. I really want to try to do this color scheme, this exact paint recipe, on some small space marines and see if it translates. I have a hunch it wouldn't or would be a lot trickier to pull off, but I don't know. This is working for me. When I paint, I like to work big to small. Airbrushes and washes first, and now onto the brushwork. I prepared my palette with gray, brown, tan, acrylic paint medium, and white paint. The same colors I airbrushed with. I made a very transparent slurry of gray paint and took it onto a messy brush, and I began stippling it around the model to push my highlights even further. I would put on gray, then quickly wash my brush, and then come back and soften the edges between the wash layer and the gray layer. I went back and forth using water and gray to make my highlights, and using my black wash darkened the recesses even further so there was plenty of contrast on the black armor. And this model was so big I couldn't really edge highlight, so what I did was I painted a stripe of gray on the edge, then feathered these out so that there was a light gray gradient on each edge. On the shoulders, I base coated the trim with gray, then I took light gray and created a bright reflection on the top part of the shoulder. Then I went back with my black wash and I painted over everything, letting it pool on the sides. I put more and more black wash until the sides of the shoulder were really dark, and then when I was happy with it, I redid my bright gray reflections on top. The difference between the black and the white is what makes these shoulders look shiny. Next up on the shoulders was to do an edge highlight. This made the gray armor look like it was absolutely glistening. This goes to show I need to paint a lot more different things because I'm having an absolute blast. This is a great crash course in two brush blending. Ah, oh, man, I gotta try some more big figs. Anyway, now it is time to do a little free handing, and I've got my reference, the old Space Marine transfer sheet. And uh, it's gonna be a little nerve wracking. There's kind of two ways to approach free handing on a project. Either you do it early and you kind of blend it into your painting scheme. That way you have a lot more room for corrections if you have errors, or you can do it as I've done it and make it easier on the front end. I have painted all of my blends and my transitions and now I just kind of have to get the freehanding exactly right the first try. But the Templar symbol is one of the simpler of the, of the Space Marine symbols, so hopefully it'll be fine. I started out by putting a black mark in the center of the shoulder and then painting a plus. Then I painted V's coming off of each end. Then I painted an X in the center of my plus to show the thickness I wanted. Then I connected the points of the X with the ends of the V's and after all that, all I had to do was fill in my outline. I looked at what I had done next to the decal sheet and it was not great. A little too small and thin and lopsided, but that's okay because it's super easy to go bigger. I gave it another pass and corrected all my errors. 
Before, I mentioned a different way to freehand by doing it first, and that is the easier method. I could have painted the shoulder tan and then started the freehanding. That way I could easily fix any mistakes in my freehanding by covering them up with the tan base coat. Then, once the freehand was perfect, paint my brown tan white gradients around the finished perfected freehand. I didn't do that because I have painted dozens of Templar symbols in my day and I can trust myself. I also want to paint the symbol right on his face like I do my Little Marines, so I did the same steps but this time with a light gray instead of black. <sighs> freehanding is hard. So now I'm going to switch over to something easy. Let's do the Aquila on the chest. I used some Army Painter Gold to base coat the symbol. This paint is very transparent, but that's a good thing, because after the base coat, I mixed the gold with tan to create a light gold that I put on the tips of the feathers. Then a brown gold that I placed in the middle, and then finally a black gold mixture on the inside of each feather. After that, a black wash to bring it all together, and then a highlight of silver on the most raised areas to create some reflections. And while I had the silver out, I made some micro scratches on the armor. And I did some stippling to create paint chips. I want that battle-worn look. On the purity seals, I painted them exactly like I did the armor, except brown and tan instead of black and gray. And then I loaded up my best paintbrush with watery gray paint, touched the tip to the paper, and dragged the brush across, giving it a little wiggle to make some scale text. And you know what else has a little wiggle? Our Patreon. We're starting a Manager of the Month Club. This month, you can get these squid mages. We also have high quality terrain STLs hosted by Comics, Games, and Things, viewer model critique videos, a weekly hobby hangout live stream, and more. It's the best way to support us, so head on over to Patreon to get access to even more Eons of Battle. We also have merch, link in the description. Now onto the eyes. I sprayed some red ink through my airbrush to give them a sinister glow. Then I painted on some classic Games Workshop lenses. A base coat of dark red, some light red, a highlight of orange, and a dot of white. This is how Games Workshop says to paint Space Marine eyes, and I did this for years. And then one day I thought to myself, why? Little Space Marines are too small to really appreciate a detail like this. Now I just paint a white stripe and honestly, I think it looks better. But on a big fig like this, totally worth giving it the heavy metal treatment. On my Templar, I like to give them some yellow to make them look more like old school John Blanche Templar. Like the yellow chainsword on this intercessor, who is standing on a super high quality Cobalt Keep 32mm magnet ready base. I painted some yellow stripes on the shield. It took a couple of coats to get good coverage. You know, as I paint this, I realize that I have painted an Iron Warriors little shoulder armor instead of a Black Templar shoulder armor, so... Gonna have to do something to fix that. I put red over the black and instantly fixed it from the hazard stripes of the Iron Warriors to some medieval Black Templar iconography. And a couple of scratches later, it was looking sick. Alright, there it is, every piece painted. Ah, it's time for final assembly. Final assembly. Do, 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 do. Final assembly. Ba -do, ba -do. Where's the glue? I was very proud of myself, as usually when I work in sub-assemblies, I get over-eager and try to glue it all together while I'm still working, and I end up getting glue places where it shouldn't be, smudging fresh paint, or gluing things out of order. But saving it for last is not only the best method, it's also the most fun. Now, my figure needs a nice stand, and I don't have one, but I did find this plank of wood in my basement. So I cut it into a square, drilled some holes to stick magnets into. I'm using super glue, but really I should be using epoxy. I bet these magnets pull themselves out one day, and when that happens, I will switch to epoxy. Now I need a stick to hold the Space Marine up, and this plastic paintbrush handle worked great. It has a taper which lets it really hold onto the Space Marine well. I drilled a hole in the middle of my wood to receive the brush, and then I spray painted the whole thing black. This is my favorite model I have painted in 2022. I love it! It turned out great, and it was tons of fun to do. It just goes to show, stepping outside of my painting wheelhouse leads to great results. This was a new challenge. I painted something that I've done hundreds and hundreds of times before, Black Templar Space Marines, but it was like doing it for the first time all over again. I am energized to paint Black Templar, which is not something I would have said yesterday. I always want to be improving with my painting. Not to be the best painter in the world, but because I want to be able to get what's in my head down onto the model. And this was a great learning opportunity. I not only want to paint more Black Templar, but also paint some more larger figures and different things. I have a burgeoning chibi collection. Maybe it's time to paint some of those. And what I learn from those will feed right back into my army painting. Who would have thought practice and experience is the key to improvement? What? This model makes me love my Black Templar all over again. Look how badass he looks. That is a space marine right there. Decked out with a chapter relic shoulder pad, Templar symbols, and more purity seals than ecclesiarchal temples. Space marines really are walking tanks. Who can be one-shotted by orc shooter boys. 
My Black Templar force has slowed down as of late. 10,000 points, there's only a few more things that I want, and the pile of shame is pretty small. For that army. But things like this bust and the Imperial Space Marine are ways I can take it further and continue to enjoy my army. I'll have the Crusade and then a shrine to the Crusade next to it. And thanks again to Cobalt Keep for sponsoring this video and allowing me to paint things like this bust. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and as always, thanks for watching.